Good day to you. This is uh, Brian Reddish tuning in to Spotlight on the Word. And I wish you a good day and God bless you. I just uh, want to uh, go back to recap on what we have done so far. And we're going back, we've been working from the book Living in His Presence. And this series is, is really a Bible teaching but with encouragement and practical applications. It is not so much meant for a flick on, flick off to see if anything tickles your fancy. <laughs> the point is, every word of God is necessary for our lives, not just the cherries that he can often pick. And so by doing this, we have actually uh, looked quite intensively in the first instance of how uh, the way into God's presence. And I want you to see that that is what we have been doing, the way into God's presence. And, and then after today, which is the last one, we're going to go on to entering his presence. Now, as you see, there's a structure to this. And I do encourage you to give yourself time before God. You don't come before me or listen to me. You listen because I'm only going to bring to you the words of God. And if the words of God do not tickle your fancy, then neither do I. <laughs> that's the way, because that's what, who I am. I, I am indebted uh, to the Lord to bring you his word because of how I was saved, how God saved me. And to say, go and teach, go and teach the people, go and teach things I have shown you in your life the good and the bad. Go and teach it. What you've experienced, you are able to express. Indeed, we all are, aren't we, if you think about it? Uh, what we experience, especially the difficult times, are for, for this one reason, perhaps, that we may be in a position to help those who suffer and experience the same as you have done. And so this day, I'm going to bring to you day 13 and this is the last of the, as I've said, uh, the inputs on the way. Uh, and when we look next week, God willing, at entering, there will be 15 week, weeks of entering God's presence. Well, you can see what I'm getting at. I am committed to this on behalf of the Lord. And I pray you will too. Because at the end of the day, we want God to help us. And he will. Uh, and at the end of the day, the, the bottom line is always going to be not God doing things for me, not God answering my prayers only, but God working in me to create in me a new person, a new woman, a new man. God working in me to make myself different, to be like him. And in so doing, as if I yield to that, and the way you will yield to that is to be disciplined every week the way you yield to that is to establish that personal relationship with God and amazingly when I came to the Lord I wanted God to speak to me and I to him and that was the criteria uh, that I laid before the Lord if you are there if there's a God that's the criteria and the question is, I wanted this, but you have to ask yourself, what do I want? Do I want to learn about God or do I want to learn to know God? Do I, learn, do I, wish, to, uh, do I wish to have a knowledge from the Bible of God or do I have to have an experience in my heart which reveals what the Bible also says? You see, it's a matter of reality, isn't it? and hunger and thirst. Uh, well, what, I was just thinking of the scripture of Jesus, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. He doesn't promise that what I've just said to you to anybody. He, he will provide it if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. And I want to draw you in to God. I want to draw you into God's word. My friend, the world is passing away. And all the things that you are thinking of right now, 
concerning you, your home, your life, your clothes, your holidays, your work, your relationships, your, your social life, your enjoyments. All these things are passing away and they don't add one iota to eternal life. Now, the only reason I diminish them is because of the superiority of what we're going to be offered in God's word. And so as we come to this last episode, what is it titled? It's titled, Our Bodies Washed with Pure Water. I'm going to read to you Hebrews 10, 19 to 22 for the last time. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us, through the veil, that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now that is a beautiful uh, scriptures. If it seems a big mouthful, that's because it takes 13 weeks to go through it, taking a chunk at a time. You got the time and the patience? Well, there it is. It's for you if you want it. Thanking God for the media and YouTube. It's there if you want it. And so, our bodies washed with pure water. I want to talk about pure water this morning. What's your water like when you turn the tap on? Uh, have you heard of those phrases, soft water, hard water? Well, we're going to touch on that. But before we do that, I just want us to remind ourselves again that the terminology in this scripture is to do with ceremonial rites and, and, and so on in the Old Testament. But they are used merely to reflect and draw upon the spiritual truths that they mean for you and me. For example, the washing of water is the cleansing of the word of God and so on. The heart is saved, uh, but the, the uh, mind needs converting and the word of God will convert the mind uh, and so on. Let me just read you. Something else has come into my mind about the Word of God. It's found in the Psalms. And here we, here we go. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Did you see that? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. And our soul needs converting. We don't just need to be converted in, 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 in uh, accepting Christ. The whole makeup of me needs converting and changing from glory to glory. Do they teach you that in church? The Bible does. You see, Jesus accepts you, my friend, through the blood of Jesus, through receiving Christ. Yeah, he forgives you. He's got you. You're his possession. But he loves you. And there's a whole lot of stuff he wants to do in your life, not to take away it away from you, to provide the the satisfaction, the joy, the the, uh, the the honor and blessing of having His Word in your life, uh, guiding you in ways you would never even think of. Ceremonial rights uh, requirements that were clearly established. If you look, for example, in the book of Exodus, chapter 30, this is where you'll find it. Good this is a good chapter in the Old Testament. Exodus 30, 17 to 20. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall also make a lava, or lava, of bronze, with its base also of bronze, for washing. You shall put it between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet in water from it. When they go into the house of the tabernacle of the meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister, to burn an offering made by fire to the Lord, they shall wash with water, lest they die. Ah. Wow. And so you see the requirement was for them to be washed. What a picture that is of our need to be washed, 
They were serving God. They were God's servants. They were serving him, but we need to be washed. Jesus illustrated this when he washed the disciples' feet. And so you find that in Exodus chapter 30, 17 to 20. And it gives you a nice insight into the washing of water. And so the Lord, so there it is. The Lord spoke to Moses these things, excuse me. And now we're going to have a look at, I'm going to go back to that water. I remember I was talking about a moment ago about soft water, hard water. Well, have you heard those phrases? What does it mean, soft water, hard water? Well, hard water is not hard. It's, it means it contains a lot of stone, uh, uh, lots of different types of stone, up to about 50 different types. Uh, sometimes only a, a little tiny bit. But uh, above all, we have the scales, the lime, lime scales. We all are familiar with that, aren't we? You see the white forming around the taps, and oh, you can't glad it off. And when you get your cleaners, it says with lime scale remover. Lime scale is basically removed by uh, vitamin C, lemon juice. Lemon juice is the best way of removing lime scale. But of course, you don't want to go squeezing lemons, so you get it in a in a bottle. But that's that's by the way, is, 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 you can do it. But you know what? It's possible. Uh, and I'm going to show off a minute now, because it's possible to get a, a water filter that will get rid of lime scale <laughs> well it's not just one of those common filters it's an industrial one we i invested it when we first got retired and 18 years ago and uh we buying a house i must just spend a bit more on it getting a really good water uh, softener and this softens the water that in goes into the whole house not just your tap but that you drink from and essentially, all the water that comes in from the water board goes through this process of being filtered. Um, and it's called reverse osmosis. Well, I never did chemistry. But it goes through this. And then it comes out with about 99% stone free. And so you get the water, there's nothing in it. Now, that water is perfect for washing the dishes, uh, set, uh, you know, uh, having a shower, uh, and washing your dishes in the dishwasher uh, uh, or whatever, clothes in the washing machine. And guess what? And the kettle, of course. Guess what? You don't get any lime scale, ever. But when it comes to the water that you uh, drink, you need to add something back again. I mean, there are some good things in water, like a bit of calcium and magnesium. So in this proce process of filtering the water, <coughs> the calcium and magnesium or whatever it goes is put back again. And you have a special tap just for drinking water at the kettle. So that you're getting perfect pure water and you're just getting, <coughs> excuse me, having a bit of nasal problems today. Always do. And so, I want to tell you a little bit about soft water because I had to see it with my own eyes to believe it. The gentleman came in for about an hour and a half to, years ago to explain this, how it worked. And he got these tubes of water. One had got tap water. He says, put some water from your tap into that tube. And this is soft water that's been gone through the purifier system. See, they look the same, don't they? And he got a dr one drop of fairy liquid and he dropped it into both. And then he said, take, take your water in this test tube and put your hand on the top and shake it up, shake it. And I kept shaking it and sure, sure enough, you could see bubbles starting to come because it's got some drop of fairy liquid in it. You could see the bubbles. He says, now, nah, watch this. We had one drop in each, right? He took his, shook it. It was frothing out of the top. I said, well, why, why is that? He says, because this is pure water. It's pure and he said, you wash your hands in this. No soap, just let the water rub your hands, fine, water. Now do it in the soft water. Wow, it's like, it's like silk. It's like silky water. I said, that's unbelievable. This is soft. Well, that, that convinced me I needed to have soft water thereafter. And uh, it's just me, I fancied it. But I want to use this illustration to show you that God's word is pure pure 
and it will wash and cleanse in a pure manner. <clears throat> and guess what? When this water that has been uh, filtered, when you start using it in your kettle, which is full of lime scale, after about a week, all well, the lime scale's gone. <coughs> because this pure water washes away the lime scale. That's amazing. I find it unbelievable. And that's an action of the word of God. You've got stuff sticking to you. From the world, There's old habits, old stuff you don't want. And over a long period of time, scale takes a long time, a few weeks, a month. And you really need that to be washed away. And the word of God will wash in that way. It will cleanse. It will remove. It will not just add something, but it will take away something. It will take away the dross. It will take away the, the bad stuff. And you've got to give this time. You know, the world is going so fast, you know. I opened up this this day with trying to say, give it time. And I really mean it, you know. Come on, what, we, what do we want out of life? It's worth giving a bit of time if you want God's word to wash you and cleanse you. I mean, I look at the people who go to the gym. They give it time. A couple of times, once, twice, three times a week, they're out there. And if they're not in the gym, they're running around the street. What are they doing? They're looking at their clocks and they're giving it time because they've got an agenda. They've got an ambition to get their heart rate going at a, at a good sort of fit pace and perhaps shedding a few calories too. They've got an agenda, a worldly agenda, a vain agenda to some, but it's an agenda. That's the important thing. People who are athletes have an agenda. They have to give it. Anyway, you know very well, you have to give time if you want to be good at something. Brothers, who says you don't have to give time to the word? You don't give time to your own peril. You miss out. And I, I just want to tell you the value of with the word of God. Let me go back to that scripture I was reading. And... It was found in Psalm. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Let me just carry on a bit. Listen to this. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments... How long does this list go on? The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The more to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. More sweeter also than honey of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Well, I we used to sing a song about that one time. But you see... I used to read that in awe. I thought, I'm missing that a lot here. Am I, don't I find that the law of the Lord is pure? Well, I might not find it, but I want to find it. How does all this work with the word? I tell you what, it starts off by giving yourself time to read it. And if you've not been filled with the Spirit, if you're not born again, for goodness sake, ask God to save you and fill you with the Holy Ghost. We're not talking about academia here. We're talking about God having the channel within you to, to, to fill you and to speak to you. That channel has to be the Holy Ghost. It has to be a free channel. You can't have, a, you can't have it all, all the, uh, uh, the, the, in the heart of you without any tributaries coming out your mouth, out your, your ears, wherever. Eyes, every part of you, your hands, your feet, where you go, what you do. You want the Holy Spirit to affect your whole being. And so you've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Some people don't let the Holy Spirit go out the heart. They're too scared. But you see, if you get filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, he flows. Jesus said about the Word and the Holy Spirit, he said, uh, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. 
and out of his innermost being shall flow out of the innermost being. That's where the spirit goes, by the way. A person is born again as the spirit within. But that's not enough. Out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Have you had that experience? Can you relate to that? Well, come on. Jesus said that. There is a way in which the word has to come out by the spirit and set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. He sets you free. Well, that's a little bit about natural water. And it's pure, believe you me. You have to see it and experience it to fully realize what I'm talking about. And so, having looked at the actions of this pure water, remember, it, there's about 50 or different kinds of stone and stuff, and chemicals that come out. Having been uh, looked at that and what it does, how it can remove lime scale, even the, 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 what's, in the, what's in the pipe, just imagine going through your central eating system. It's all being, it's amazing, coming out. We have to look at what the word of God does in action in our lives. You've seen the action of the pure water, removing the scale and the dross. Let's see the action of the, the word of God in our lives. And you've got to have it linked with the Holy Spirit because he's the one who flows. He flow, it flows. And it's got to flow. Water that stays still is stagnant. It gets a smell. But when it flows, it's got life. It's got oxygen. Fish and insects and stuff can live in it when it flows. Let it flow in you, brother and sister. Let the word of God flow. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit will, let, will show you if you let him. Don't worry. <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6, a famous verse to do with the water, the washing, and the word. Jesus is talking about his church. Having saved it, he wants to wash it and sanctify it that he may present to God a, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And it says, and that he, Jesus, might sanctify and cleanse her church with the washing of water by the word. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Write that down. This is a good verse to start building on. Jesus wishes to sanctify and cleanse you with the washing of water by the word. Get from God what he's talking about there for yourself. Because he's talking about you and his desire to wash you. There's another one. Psalm 19.9. How can a young man cleanse his way? How are you going to do it? By taking heed according to your word. You see, in many ways this don't make sense. How can you, taking heed to a word uh, written, written down on paper, how can that do anything in me? Well, well, that's where we go wrong, don't we? Because it's not word written on paper. Obviously it is. But the word of God is God's word. It's the spoken word. It's, it's the rima, as well as the, the other one. It's life. Remember when God spoke and it was done in creation. We have got to have a, have a change of mind regarding God's word. It's put down that we may be able to read it and with the help of the Spirit, obtain life from it. Life from it. One of the wonderful things I like to see is sometimes you mix a chemical with water and it goes all frothy. One of the things I'm thinking of is bicarbonate of soda. Good cleaner, actually. Well, I'm not quite sure whether you put the water in the bicarb or the bicarb in the water. But if you imagine... You got some water for a minute. Still, it's still. Just like that water there. See, a bit of water there. I keep drinking it because I've got a bit of nasal trouble. That's water is still. If I pour a bit of bicarbonate in it, it'll froth up. Suddenly, it's alive. That's what it, the word of God. The word of God is like that. It's still. But when the spirit of God, like the bicarb, comes in, it, it froths up and becomes alive that's what we got to understand by the word of god we've got to treat reading the bible in that way if it's dead it's because it needs the holy ghost come on 
How did the word of God come about that you read? The Bible says it was not, did not come by the will of man or any way, but holy men of God wrote the word as they were moved upon and inspired by the spirit. Now, having gone through all those pains and, 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 and uh, time and to, to get the word down in that manner, we're just going to pick it up and read it like a book. We're just going to pick it up and read it like a book. Come on. The Holy Ghost inspired men to write this. Without the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to get it. I can't emphasize this enough. You see, I was brought up as a Pentecostal Christian because that's all I knew. I say I was brought up when I was 19 and I came to the Lord. See, I wanted reality from God. I, I said to my mum, if God is real, he should speak to you and he with me. I wanted the effervescent word of God. I, want, I didn't want that. It's okay if you want to memorize it. That's different. That's being academia. But if you want it effervescent to become alive in your life, You've got to have the Spirit of God. Now, you may not be Pentecostal because there aren't so many that teach the Bible quite like they used to do. But don't throw away the Holy Ghost because don't be frightened of things you hear about. Oh, they speak in tongues. They do all, they roll around on the floor. Oh, I don't want that. What you're saying is I don't want the Holy Ghost. You are. Because by shunning what's obviously unwise behavior, by shunning unwise behavior, you're turning away from the good as well as the bad. This is what Christendom is all about today. They haven't got time for uh, evanescence, spilling over. And yet that's what you need. That's exactly what you need. Uh, you don't have to make a scene and a show in church, but you can get filled and overflow in your room privately. Oh, you can get filled with the Lord in the Holy Ghost and the joy but you've got to be thirsty. You've got to want him. I said, if there's a God then, and God has remembered that all my life, if I come before him and say, Lord, I just want to come back to you again, and I really want you to cleanse me and wash me. I just want to get my life in mind of, of this day in order. You know, and I, the Holy Spirit comes and he, he, he prompts me when it's time to do something. He prompts me when it's time to stop. He prompts me all the time. Uh, if I'm, if I'm, well, you won't understand what I'm on about, all this prompting, prompting, but you will. God has his own way of communication with everybody. I know what he's doing. He's speaking to me, but you won't get it unless you, you get before the Lord and ask him to speak to you. You get before the Lord wanting him. You know, I'm really, I'm really giving you a, a non-preaching message this morning. I'm giving you my heart. I'm giving you things that I see that the Spirit of God does. The Spirit of God does these things. I see it. I know it. Why? Because for 58 years I've lived it. And I, I'm giving you this to get you hungry and thirsty. Well, one of the best parts of this, I just want to leave with you before we go. This, the action of the Spirit. Oh, of course, I missed some scriptures. I'm going on, aren't I? Let me listen, listen to these scriptures. Pure water and its action will cleanse your mind, your conduct, your attitude, your character. As you absorb its truth, the Spirit of God will utilize it and you will find life in you. So there's just a little message popping up on my video. And it, you know how it does. Well, I'll look at that later. You know, it says in Psalm 24, 3 to 4, Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol or sworn deceitfully. Proverbs 35, every word of God is pure. You ever get those words which you see a bit difficult and awkward or even a bit bad and, oh dear, what, does, what can that mean? Let me tell you, the word of God is pure. You've got to find out what it means. Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is necessary for the building up of your soul. And so finally, we have to have our minds changed by the word 
And what better passage than in Romans 12, 1 to 2? Listen to this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living. Have you heard me today? You've been hearing, I, I have said, you have to be thirsty. You have to come and want God in these real ways. That's what he's saying. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice. You've got to do that. God ain't got to do it. Wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conform, conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh, I love this. this so I could preach for 13 weeks on this. But what is it saying here? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This transformation and renewing of your mind isn't just to take you away from the evil, uh, of course it is. But it's the transformation in the ring of your mind that you need for, for everything. The good as well as the bad. You need your mind to be renewed. To see things the way God sees. To understand circumstances the way God understands. Do you want this knowledge? Do you want this wisdom? It comes with time. It comes with time with walking with God. The Pharisees said, hmm. I can see those disciples over there. I can tell they've been with Jesus. <laughs> I bet they could. Can people tell you've been with Jesus by the way you speak, with wisdom, with truth? God says in Isaiah 55, verses 2 to 3 and 8 to 9, Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear. What's going on here? Incline your ear and come to me. There you go again. And come to me. Here. And your soul. The only time people preach about coming to God is to receive Christ. And that's it. Well, that's not saying that. It's saying come to me. Here. And your soul shall live. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. God wants us to understand his thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. God wants us to understand his ways. This is not about being a born, born again. This is about understanding God. And knowing and really having a relationship with him. They don't teach you this do they? Get in there. If you want God. Prove it. You don't want to just go to heaven. You want to go there to know God before you get there. You want to be able to be used of God to, to tell people about a wonderful saviour. That's what God wants from you. And he wants you to learn of him in order to do it. My thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and your thoughts, my thoughts than yours. So what is God is saying here? Listen, if you're listening, what are you listening to? A voice, somebody speaking. The word of God. He's asking you to listen to his word. Listen to him speak. Pick up this Bible and listen to him. That's what he's saying. You thought this book was just a study. Now, nah, it's your daily life. You need to hear from God as you read it. To know him. Uh, well, we could go on and on and on. But I have to bring this to an end. Because you've got things to do and, well... I've not particularly got anything else to do, but I understand. But it says here, it says, come and incline your ear. Incline, don't just be here. No, I've got hearing aid here. But incline your ear. You know, when Jesus came into this world, it says in the Psalms and in Hebrews, sacrifice and offerings you didn't want, but mine ear you have opened. He opened his ear. He wanted him to hear the word and do it. And... Uh, and it says in the Psalms, you've dug, dug my ear and made it open, dug it wide so that I can hear every word. Listen, that's about Jesus. Our ears need to be opened. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I want you to realize today, brothers and sisters, you've got the biggest part to do. And that is to come and yield yourself to God, to come and want God and let God do the rest. 
And that stems from a desire and a love for him and an earnest desire. I can't do some things I can't do for myself. Yeah, tell me about it. Most things you can't, but God can. My friend, this is the last one of coming. Coming and knowing the way into God's presence. Brothers, I pray for you today that you will have a real personal relationship with God, that you will know the washing of water by the word. You will know the effervescent uh, by car mixing with the water, frothing over, running over. I pray you'll have these experiences yourself because you deserve them. You're a soul for whom Christ died. God bless you.